Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Patrick's. The month of May is both named for and dedicated to Mary. And Catholics have long honored the Blessed Mother by placing a crown on her image. Crowning the statue of the Lord's Mother is symbolic of the honor we give her as one of the chosen by God to bear his Son, our Savior. Mary is Queen of Heaven and Earth because she was the perfect follower of Christ, who is the absolute crown of creation. She is the Mother of the Son of God, who is the Messianic King. Mary remained steadfast in devotion to her Son, all the way to the foot of the cross. After the ascension, she continued in prayer with the church. She truly has won the crown of righteousness, the crown of life, and the crown of glory promised to those who follow Christ. The tradition of crowning images was commonplace in the Eastern Church. A blessed crown was frequently used to adorn icons in churches to add additional splendor, much like a gilt frame. In Rome, during the late 16th century, Pope Clement VIII turned his, this tradition of crowning images of Mary into a formal ceremony, which was continued by successive popes. In the United States, the tradition today is for children to crown a statue of Mary with a crown of flowers during, during Mass. Today, we will honor this tradition. Please remain seated as we sing our gathering song of praise, number 196, Immaculate Mary. <clears throat> another song Loretta or are we ready to get started no more songs okay good uh, good morning everybody good morning, good morning Father. Father. God, it's still morning uh, today is um, Mother's Day so a special welcome to mothers we'll give you a blessing toward the end of mass and we had the May crowning today uh, kids did a good job they brought lots of flowers which hopefully every mother will I don't know if we have enough but uh, hopefully you get a flower at the end of mass See, what also is today, it's, uh, it's the 100th anniversary of Our Lady of Fatima in Portugal. 
And uh, our Holy Father yesterday, Francis, was in Portugal and canonized the two youngest, uh, I think Lu Lucia is already canonized, but he canonized the two youngest children, uh, Francisco, I think he was about seven or eight when he died, and Jacinta was nine or 10. And folks, uh, has anyone here been to Fatima? Oh, okay, the Doyles, I've been there. Andy, good for you. Anyone else? It's, uh, I would recommend the trip. I was in, uh, oh, I shouldn't tell you all this maybe, but I was in Rome, the Archbishop asked myself and another priest, maybe another guy, well, two from our, uh, more than you want to know. Anyway, I was studying Spanish in Salamanca for about two months, beautiful town, and we took the train down to Fatima, and I really enjoyed that. It was, it's not, some of the places get too touristy, but Fatima is fairly simple, austere, so I liked it. Anyway, I was able to visit there for a night or two. And uh, the two ch youngest children, this was predicted, I believe, by Mary, uh, died at like seven or eight, eight or nine. And they basically died from World War I. Because if you know your history, World War I, of course, was devastating to Europe, destroyed the environment, destroyed resources, and allowed a special flu bug, and this is before they had vaccines, a special flu bug to flourish. And it was a pandemic in Europe. I think it also came in the US, but it was a pandemic. And more people died in the pandemic of 1918-19 from the flu than died in all of World War I. That's why folks, uh, that's why war is not good and the importance of protecting the environment so little children and others don't die, okay? Okay, let's see. Mother's Day, fifth Sunday of Easter, 100th anniversary of Our Lady of Fatima. And I'll just say this now for fun. This is also Rhubarb Sunday. So <laughs> there's rhubarb out there if you want some rhubarb uh, as you leave church today. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Take a moment and acknowledge our need for the mercy of God in our lives. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Mighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. that we might be open to receiving God's Easter gifts. Almighty, ever-living God, 
you accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joy of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. mother's arms so will I rest in you like a child rests in its mother's arms so will I rest in you like a child rests in its mother's arms so will I rest in you like a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you. My God, I am not proud. I do not look for things too great. Like a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you like a child rests in its mother's arms so will I rest in you my God I trust in you you care for me you give me peace like a child rests in its mother's arms so will I rest in you, like a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you. O Israel, trust in God, now and always trust in God. Like a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you. Like a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be holy, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for you those without faith, the stone that the the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do not know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. 
Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen. I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. The uh, message going through the Easter season from the Acts of the Apostles is um, pretty prevalent in, in regards to the whole idea that the church is in its infancy stages and it's trying to, to build. And it's a, it's a hard thing to do. And in that first reading this morning, you probably maybe noticed that there's a kind of a division of labor, the, the apostles, they, they want to go out and preach the word and give the spiritual needs of the people and that yet they need someone to be able to give the people their food and uh, provide for the, the physical needs. And so as, as a result, you know, we, like I told Father in Belle Plain this morning, we have the, the priests and then the, the deacons uh, are established here and so the uh, priests are dumping on the deacons to do all the hard work no I'm just kidding but <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway uh, that that's that's kind of what's what's going on in, in a sense is, is that they they uh, they decided that somebody needed to preach the word you know so that they had the spiritual needs met but also there was a need just like today for the charitable part for for the uh, the deacons to uh, be able to provide for the needs of the, uh, the community in regards to food and clothing and so forth. So uh, what's going on there is that um, the uh, church creates kind of a, a new office to fulfill the, the needs of the people. And that's still uh, obviously going on in, in the church today. And that second reading reinforces the fact that we all need to be living stones to build up the church, that we be the foundation. Um, that we are the ones that we need to build off of to build up the mystical body of Christ. And so I think the question always arises, and it, I think it's probably been a question of mine for many, many years, and you kind of hear it in the hallways, is what's going to happen to the church? Um, some people say, this isn't the church I used to know. This is not like it used to be. And so... I've said that to myself many, many times since I was a kid growing up, especially experiences in the changes of the Vatican Council and all the things that have happened and transpired. But I used to meet uh, in Belle Plain with the ecumenical pastors, and there was one pastor I always remember, he's, he's gone now, but uh, he used the term when it, when it came to the Holy Spirit guiding the church, he used the term, you got to hang loose, you got to let it happen. Uh, don't be alarmed, you know, as to where the church is, is taking you. Um, and I think the idea today is, is, is that God sees the church a lot different than we see the church. And sometimes our, our vision, our perception gets pretty narrow. And I know that mine has. I remember going through uh, diaconate, and uh, I remember Father John Hagen taught ecclesiology. And uh, he made us very much aware that the church is big. You know, it's bigger than we can perceive. And we have to kind of deal with that and address that. We, we get kind of uh, parochial and set in our, our ways in our own little areas, but we got to remember that the church is outside of the, the cluster and outside of St. Saint, Saint Patrick's Church. And so uh, Father and I have, have talked a lot about, you know, the number of priests in the diocese since I've been a kid. Just about every parish in the diocese had a resident pastor. There was about... 500 priests back then, back in the 60s. Today we're dealing with about 100. Um, thankfully, we're going to have some new ordinations, a deacon, deacons and priests this year. And, um, but even at that, uh, the deacons in the diocese, I think number around 100, you'd have to ask Stan about that, but I think the number around 100. And um, as a result, you know, uh, they're doing some of the work past pastoral work and some of the sacramental work that the, the priests used to do 
Um, and then also along with that, we have pastoral associates. We have business office managers to take up uh, the slack to cover um, some of the secretarial things that need to be done that the priests used to do. We have administrators. Uh, we have lay people uh, in ministries of, of liturgy and lectors and, and all these things that Father kind of used to do um, to take the pressure off of Father that, that um, you know, he doesn't do anymore. I, I remember uh, years ago, some of the old priests telling me that in some parishes, the priests even dug the graves. So it got pretty intense, you know, in that regard as to where the church used to be. Um, Andy's kind of smiling back there. <laughs> He's probably hoping he doesn't have to dig, <laughs> dig any graves someday. No, I'm just kidding. But, but anyway, um, you know, uh, the church might not be exactly the way we envision it sometime. And so I think we have to kind of stay tuned and uh, look back at the, the history of the church. I remember going to a, a, a deacon seminar and uh, there was a, a priest that, that taught us uh, when, and he did the best explanation of, of Vatican II that I'd ever, ever seen before in my life. You know, in the early church, the very early church, there were deacons. And then for many, many years, for some reason, there weren't deacons. And, you know, in the Vatican Council, they reinstituted the, the permanent diaconate. If they wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't be standing up here today. But, uh, but anyway, it's kind of interesting that many people think that the changes that we, we have in the church sometimes are new changes. But they're, they're really not. And... Um, I, I remember the, the, the priest that, that taught us about the Second Vatican Council was saying the whole idea behind the council was to bring the church back to its roots. In other words, we had deacons, we didn't have deacons, and then we had deacons again. And so, you know, we, we have to always think in terms of that as bringing the church back to its original roots, what the church intended because sometimes the church wants to veer away from those roots and so a lot of times we have a council that reinstitutes those ideas that were formerly there those traditions that were or ordinarily there and we, we some, somehow kind of drift away from them and so we have to go back to our tradition uh, and, and our roots so I think it's kind of interesting we we keep an eye on where the church is we don't necessarily maybe agree with what the church does a lot of times we hear a lot of protesting I don't like this in the church I don't like that in the church I wish we could do it this way or that way I read a little article uh, this last week and this this information comes from the the National Catholic Reporter but uh, it was used in uh, one of the um, homily homilytic helps this last week but the uh, statistics are the Chicago Diocese has 766 priests to serve 2.2 million Catholics today. And the projections are 240 priests by 2030. So wow, you know, what's going to happen? We don't know. Maybe that'll be, maybe, maybe it won't be. Maybe there'll be many, many more times that many priests by the time we hit 2030. Uh, the idea is, the re reason I say that is that we don't know what God's plan for the church is. We don't know where the Holy Spirit is guiding the church to. I kind of use that example as the, the Haiti Project. You know, I can remember in the infancy stages of the, the Haiti Project, we sat around at staff and said, is there a way that we could make $7,000 for one bin to go to Haiti? Well, lo and behold, they raised forty-six thousand, forty-seven, forty-seven thousand dollars. You know, so that's uh, you know many, many more times the amount that we even anticipated. But that's the way God God works, and that's the way that we kind of need to look at the church. That things that we envision that the church should be is not always the way God wants the church to be. And I, I think uh, last but not least, uh, in the church, we need to kind of expect. Uh, the unexpected and I, I just want to kind of end by by telling you the story of uh, I was at a, a diaconate it wasn't a, a retreat but it was kind of a seminar a couple weeks ago and we had a, a guest speaker there a priest um, from the Lincoln Diocese and he had many many gifts and talents he was a young guy and he told the story of his life and through the day he did a great presentation um, 
he told the story of his life. He interjected his life story along with scripture and, and along with, you know, catechesis and so forth. But it was, it was just an awesome day in regards that not everybody can do that, connect, connect the dots and, and get it all done in, in one, one seminar like that. But he did a great job. But he just said that, you know, his, his father originally came from Ireland and his uh, father was married three times. His mother died when he was two. And he, uh, and he never knew anything about his mom up until his later years and even past his ordinary ordination when his neighbors would come up and say some of the things about his mother. And uh, one, one thing he found out was that um, his neighbor lady always put him in bed. She was dying of cancer, but she would always put him in bed, you know, when he was just a, a baby um, until his mother passed away. So he told an interesting story, but the idea is, is that when in his younger life, when he was growing up, he was exposed to um, drugs, alcohol, and pornography. And uh, the intent of his, his, his uh, uh, message that day was to let people know the problem that we have with pornography. And uh, we have so much access to it on our computers, our cell phones, um, magazines, whatever it might be. But it's a, it's a huge problem. And uh, he went uh, from Michigan to Lincoln and uh, eventually was called to be a priest. He was ordained and, and this is his ministry today. He presented this, this to the bishop of, uh, a couple years ago and uh, he set on you know, making sure that uh, we keep an eye on the, the, the problem with pornography but uh, anyway, uh, the bishop advised him, just delegate this out, just delegate this out. And um, he, um, he asked the bishop, you know, could I, could I do this? I want to head this up. I want to be the wheel, not the spoke in the wheel. And so the bishop gave him permission. But anyway, he's doing an awesome job, you know, with this. And, uh, and you know, God bless him for all his efforts. But the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up is, is that um, I kind of wonder, you know, his mom died when he was so young. If she really knew that he would, he would ever end up to be a priest. And uh, so I think the idea is it's Mother's Day today. And uh, some of the things that mothers or guardians can, kind of anticipate, you know, when, they're, when their kids are, are being raised. And uh, sometimes, you know, things that are expected, they're, they're good, they're bad. And if you look at Scripture and Mary uh, in the, the Bible, you'll see that... Uh, she experienced and, and witnessed the crucifixion, but she also experienced the resurrection. And I think that's what, you know, mothers see. You know, they, they see both the, the joy, you know, the frustration, the sorrow a lot of times. And uh, kind of remind me of Mother's Day today, of how this, this priest came to be ordained and the, and the good things that he did. And, uh, you know, how he remembered his mother only by people telling him, you know, what his mother was, was like. So... So anyway, uh, it's Mother's Day. It's a good day to return home. And it's a good day to, to come back to mom and, and uh, say your, your hellos and, and thank her for all the things that she's done. But it's also a good day to remember that we need to always return home to the church, that the church is a place for comfort and, and solace and peace. And so we always have to remember that church is mother church, a place where we can come back to, that the church is our mother as well and that God has blessed us and, and blessed our mothers uh, to be uh, that piece of rock for us in our life and that, that living stone. So anyway, God bless everybody on, on Mother's Day and, um, and celebrate that, that fact that Mary uh, is our mother. We can come home to our mothers and, and thank them for all the things that they've done for us in our lives. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, greater of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Trusting that God is with us on the journey of life, we give our needs in that faith. For all mothers or guardians, that their community will support them and comfort them in their joys and in their sorrows. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who claim the name Christian, that their lives be guided by the values that Jesus taught in the Gospels. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who minister in the church, that their labors be fruitful and rewarding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that it may continue its mission to proclaim the good news of our Lord's victory over sin and death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer hardship from oppression, poverty, or injustice, that their burdens be lifted and that they continue to have hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and those close to death, that they may be helped and receive the gift of courage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have gone before us, including Diane Waters, marked with the sign of faith, that they may be numbered among the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, receive every need placed with faith and in hope before you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 514, The Eyes and Hands of Christ.
acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the May Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands, hands through the, the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our, our good and the good of all his holy church. church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice has made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to give you yet more praise when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, we join the angels and saints and sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim in song. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope 
Michael, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And your grace grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And in your grace, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Easter peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 702, <clears throat> Hail Mary, Gentlewoman. Okay, announcements. Oh, Deanna. Up 
let well, Diana can go before me. I am Deanna Dickinson McCarroll, and with Denise Fletcher, we co chaired the Linton uh, Huts for Haiti campaign. And as you know, the campaign has wound up, and as Deacon Joe said, our initial goal was $7,000. We wanted to supply one hut. That was blown out of the water. Our ending total is $47,099.47. And <laughs> Instead of one safety home, we can provide six safety homes and two wells. Father Mike has given me way too much credit for how, how hard I worked on this project. Uh, the true success is from all of you. Denise and I planted the seed of what was, what was needed, but you guys all made it grow. Uh, we, we presented the idea to the parish council and the Knights, the CCW ladies, other groups along the way. They made it possible. Every cake and cookie you bought at a bake sale ate lunch for the, with the KCs, and every coin or dollar bill you threw in the collection plate. Uh, for that, I thank you so much. I think you all saw how great a need there is and what a good endeavor this is. We probably will never know how many lives we've changed or maybe saved. I hope to be able to make the service trip to Haiti along with the others that have signed up. I hope to. Then I will happily bring back to you as much information as I can about this project and what you have made possible. I believe I speak for Denise too when I say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you, Denise, and as you said, you planted the seed, so I guess you and Denise are seedy characters, okay? <laughs> seedy characters. <laughs> okay, I think she said everything that needed to be said there. Uh, again, happy Mother's Day, and I'll, I'll do a blessing here at the end of Mass for all mothers. Uh, just a reminder, there's still a little mistake in the bottom corner of the bulletin front. Uh, the, the Friday daily mass, if we have a daily mass will be in the summer months, is at 8 o'clock. It just seems to work out better. It's cooler, and, and uh, mm -hmm. it's just, I'm, I think people kind of like it. So we'll see. Oh, what else we got here? We still need, this is an important need, three or four couples to serve on the festival committee. And folks, uh, got to get some couples here to, to do this. So, you know, look at people and ask around, ask around, because if we don't get some help this year, it would be the last year of the festival, which would be a loss, I think, for the parishes, because it's, it's a good event, and it's a good fundraiser, too, but it's a good event. We thank the uh, Knights of Columbus, the KCs, for providing the flowers for our May crowning today, and uh, I think the servers are going to carry those out uh, into the atrium. Graduation. Oh, is it again? Graduation. It's today? Okay. Well, I was still doing the flowers, okay. <laughs> so you guys will carry the flowers out, and every mother should get a flower today, okay? Hopefully there's enough uh, to go around. And as Patty just mentioned, today's graduation day. Graduation day, there was a, I heard there was a humongous party in, in Marshalltown at the mall yesterday or something, but there, there were quite a few parties going on yesterday, and probably today too. Okay, and then this is, this is going to sound complicated. It's not really, but I need to mention this. Folks, uh, we've had a little concern uh, in the office about security. Uh, sometimes, it's not, not infrequently, there might only be one person in the office. It might be Steph, it might be Vicki at the front desk there, or it might be uh, Jackie in her office. And every so often we get kind of a strange character that walks in. Um, and sometimes we're wondering if they're you know, certainly if they're a good person, but also if they're a little mentally unstable. We had an incident here 
couple months ago, I think it was, where uh, I think Steph was here alone, and this fella came in and he started making demands. He wanted to use our computers, and well, you can go to the library if you want to use a computer, you know, but he wanted to use our computers, made some other demands. And sometimes in the summer, you know, we get uh, what I usually call Knights of the Road. They're traveling, a, ah, my competition is doing great. He's great. He's saying, Father, you need to quit talking. You've talked enough already. <laughs> he just likes to change the pace. Okay. Uh, but anyway, this fellow was in here, and thankfully Dan was here. Uh, and so Dan walked in the office, and then they were able eventually to get him out the door. But we have to use some discretion. Most city parishes would have the schools and things. So we put in a security system. It's, it's quite good. Uh, so here's how it would work. If you come to the office during nor normal office hours, you come to the west door. That's the door where the sun sets, okay? When you walk up to the door, there's a camera up here. So Jackie, Steph, or Vicki can see who's at the door. Now, I don't have that in my computer. It could be put on my computer, but I can look out the window and see who's there if I hear a rustle at the door. And uh, then on the north wall on your left, you press the button. When you press the button, the people in the office are alerted that someone is there. Then they have a nice little white box. They put one, push one button to, so they can talk, turns the sound on, and then they push the other one, they talk to the person, and they can re release the door. Okay, they release the door. So if you come during normal office hours, just say, I'm here to give a whole lot of money to the parish, and I'm sure they'll let you in. <laughs> so they will release the door for you. There's a, another couple ways that this works, folks. Uh, also, Steph can do this on her computer. She can program the door to be open at certain times. So for example, this worked like a charm, Saturday morning there's a prayer group, a men's prayer group that gets together and they pray from 7 to about 8.30. So she programs the door to be open, the west door again, the west door, from 6.30 to 8.30. You can tell if the door is open because as you're walking out, right above, there's a light kind of a bright little light, a little hard to see sometimes when the sun is in your face, I found out. But anyway, it's, it, if the door is locked, it's red. Guess what color it is if the door is unlocked? Green. Green, of course. Now, folks, and if you're in the building, of course, you can always get out. I mean, there's, every door in this place will let you out. But, but the lock on this door is magnetic. Now, this is important. I'll, I'll emphasize this here in Tama. Normally, like when the Knights meet or some other group meets, they, they release the panic bar to lock the door. That bar must not be released, because if that's released, the door will be locked, and you can't get in anyway, anyway, unless you have a key to some other doors, something like that. So the panic bar stays in, because the locking mechanism now on this new whatever is magnetic, it's magnetic, and it works very well. So what happens is, as you're walking out that door, when you get about four feet from the door, the light has a motion sensor. It detects that you're moving, and the door automatically goes red to green, and you just walk out. You just walk out, okay? So again, and there's a, a third way you can get in, and, and Steph will be handling this bit by bit. We have these key fobs, F-O-B-S, I believe, key fobs. You can put on your key ring, like if you have a, drive a car, something like that. And then, like for example, I'll pick on Bruce here. Bruce, the great cook, he cooks for our meals, wherever he is. So Bruce, you'd, you would get a, I can't even see him wherever he's at. He's, oh, what, way out there. Okay, I didn't see you out there, Bruce. He's dressed so nice today, I didn't recognize him. I'm just kidding. Uh, he, uh, he would have a key fob, and then sometimes when he cooks for the nights, he'll come in on Thursday or Friday, and all he has to do, now if it's an office hours, uh, he could press a button, I suppose. But if it's on a Saturday or something like that, uh, he would tell Steph, and she, from her computer, can program his fob to let him in on Saturday between like eight and eight or something like that. He's, I think he's kind of an early guy. So anyway, so that's three ways to get in. One, now if you have a key to the church, of course, or something like that, you can get in the church. But number one is the door will be, uh, you can push the button during office hours and then be let in. Number two, the door will be, I checked it this morning, by the way. I checked when I came over here, I always stop by my office, I checked to see if the light was green. And so Steph programmed that door to be open 
Sunday mornings from some time to some other time. I don't know if she did it. So the pair of setter doors is, is green on, during our mass times. I don't know if she did it for Saturday night. And then if, if you need, have a special need, you can uh, get a fob. Now if she's have a hard time uh, give, getting a fob from Steph, you could probably bribe her, okay? You could probably bribe her. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. That was a lot, but uh, you'll find that in practice, this will work, I think, very well. And folks, I feel better because, you know, like I said, we get the Knights of the Road sometimes. Uh, it's some of them you wonder about a little bit. And if I was a gal in here by myself, I would want a little more control of access to the building, okay? What did I forget to announce? No, I did graduation. <laughs> well, let's see. Oh, uh, Joe's on vacation this week. Almost forgot. Joe is on vacation this week. I think he said he wanted, wants to dig a grave. Is that what you're going to do, dig a grave? <laughs> and Cade, his grandson, had a birthday party last. I didn't make it to the birthday party, but he had a wonderful. Was he four? He's four. He was a handful at one, and he's even more of a handful at four. Anyway, so happy birthday to Cade. Anything else I should say? Oh, yeah. Uh, I should mention this, and I'll say it now so Andy can correct me if I'm wrong. This will be in the bulletin this week. Andy will be ordained a transitional deacon, not this Friday, but the next Friday at the Cathedral in Dubuque at Siete, at, at 7 o'clock in the evening. I plan to go to that. I plan to go to that. And anyone would be welcome. Uh, it's at the Cathedral in Dubuque, St. Raphael. So he'll be ordained at 7 in the evening. So I'll have to make arrangements for my, uh, my critters. And I plan to stay overnight. I'm not, not sure I can make to the priestly one the next day. I'll have to see how my schedule goes and that kind of thing. So, Andy, congratulations. We'll have it in the bulletin. And his father, uh, Stan, will be ordained, I think, the 15th of July. Is that correct? I'll tell you more when it gets closer. And then, God willing, keep, keep them both in your prayers. Uh, as Joe mentioned, you know, we always need vocations, and we always pray that those whom God calls might have the support and courage they need to find the way, to find the way. So Andy would be ordained probably the end of May in 2018, I suspect, something like that, okay? Okay, now I still want to bless the mothers, so everybody stand up. <laughs> and uh, if you got a mother around, put your hand on her shoulder, okay? And I'm just gonna impart a special blessing and then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna bless everybody, okay? And we'll skip the communion prayer. Father, uh, you give us mothers who share in your task of bringing new life into the world through the conception and being born and then being supported by mothers and so many others with good food and shelter and clothing, care and compassion, love and respect, and good example. We also know mothers are instrumental in bringing the life of faith to their children of bringing them to, to worship and, and the church for baptism and to receive the many other sacramental gifts that are available to us in our faith, especially Holy Communion uh, and other vocational sacraments. So we pray for our mothers today. May this be a wonderful day for them, a day of joy. May they be as happy inside today as the weather is outside today. And they might, they might know your love and care, the respect and, and uh, help of their children and eventually be with their children forever in the life of heaven. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our parting song is number 440. How can I keep from singing? My life goes on in endless song above.